A few peeps in the comments section are currently accusing Goji of exploiting the gore factor for views and clicks. Would you guys believe that people get bothered by that, huh? Like, seriously, dude, can't handle a bit of red paint, bro? How about y'all chew on that? <laughs> on a serious note, though, as a MonsterVerse fan who sees this image, this may ring a bell. You'll recall that this is just one example of the many beheadings that have occurred in the MonsterVerse. Which begs the question, why do Titans cut each other's heads off? And why is this important? Today, we'll bring forth three answers to this question, the last two of which may completely redefine the way you understand Titans. To uncover the first reason why Titans cut each other's heads off, let's try to really understand what happens during decapitation. By definition, this word means the total separation of the head from the body. This traumatic injury is guaranteed to be fatal to most animals due to two things. We'll use a human model so it's easy to understand. First off, the central nervous system is now severed from the peripheral nervous system, meaning that your brain will no longer communicate with this part of the body. Two, oxygenated blood will no longer reach the brain, giving it just a few seconds to remain conscious before it passes out and dies. And three, most sensory organs such as the eyes, ears, mouth, and nose, or gills for some other organisms, would be damaged or completely parted from the main body, making them useless. Okay, so back to the Titans. Turns out that many of these kaiju are vertebrates, and even the ones that are not seem to have a major central system cluster, aka the brain. With this knowledge, we can bring forth the very first reason why we've seen decapitations quite frequently in the MonsterVerse, and that is simply that it's the most effective means of dispatching another living being. But you're here for a more disturbing answer. Which brings us to the second reason. Enjoying this video? This is a gentle reminder for you to subscribe! And don't forget to hit join below so that you can have your name displayed at the end of the video, see videos days early, and take a sneak peek at some of our secret projects that we're cooking up behind the scenes. Now, admittedly, the fact that kaiju separate each other's central nervous system from their bodies to easily kill them still does not fully explain why they sometimes choose this method to kill other kaiju. In the real, natural world, we do see examples of animal decapitations, such as these deer whose antlers got stuck with each other and, in desperation to free themselves, one of them loses their head. Many felines, anywhere from free-roaming cats to lions, have been seen carrying severed heads of their victims around. These examples of decapitation occurred by mere coincidence or accident. Lions and other predators don't actively rip off the heads of their prey to carry them around as trophies, much less to humiliate them. But stepping back and looking at the majority of the fatalities that happen in the animal kingdom, almost none, if not very few, of these kills result in decapitation. Kaiju are a different story, though. It almost seems like these guys know what they're doing. In the last recorded 12 kaiju fatalities seen in the MonsterVerse, a total of seven of these involved injuries to the head, five of which involved decapitations. Not including the instances where Godzilla ripped off the left head at Isla de Mara, the time when Rodan was aiming to bite Mothra's head at Boston, and let's not forget this unlucky Kong specimen whose head seems to be parted from his body wherever it got left behind. The point is, at this point it's clear that these decapitations are happening suspiciously too frequently, leaving us to think that kaiju are similar, in a way, to us. If these kaiju were intellectually similar to animals, these decapitations would happen less frequently. Not only that, the behavior of these kaiju would be different upon the moment of decapitation. Let us explain. If we take note of this decapitation, for instance, Kong lifted Mechagodzilla's head like a trophy. In the real world, no animals behave this way, but humans do. When Godzilla decapitated the female Muto, this guy not only chose a rather humiliating means of doing so, but also held on to the head, as if the act of doing so held some sort of significance. But perhaps the best example was Ghidorah's final decapitation. No animal in the animal kingdom will take the time to place the severed neck in their mouth, violently slam it all over the place, and finish it off. But humans, we've come close. Historically, records of the act of cutting heads off date back to the earlier records of civilization, and over the years, humanity has gotten 
good, uh, creative with it. With depictions of us not only figuring out that this is the quickest way to dispatch enemies, but also taking pride in the taking of this body part to use as a trophy, humiliate the opponent, and use them as a means of setting an example to future opposition. Kaiju decapitations seem to be quite similar. Back to Ghidorah's decapitation. This one was quite gruesome and completely unnecessary, with Godzilla repeatedly humiliating Ghidorah even after he was defeated. Similar to the instance a long time ago in 655 BC when King Ashurbanipal proceeded to slash and spit on the severed head of the defeated Elamite king. Again, we have to reiterate that these behaviors are not commonly seen in animals, but are acts almost exclusively committed by humans and kaiju in this cinematic universe. In the eyes of a titan, an adversary would be best dealt with quickly by disrupting the central nervous system. They are all pretty smart. They not only know this, but identify this body part as the key identifier of each titan, thus treating it like a trophy of sorts. There is no better body part to send a message to others than the head of another kaiju. But as we study this behavior in kaiju, a common denominator will begin to arise. This act of decapitation has only been committed by alphas. That's right, not just any kaiju has been ripping heads out. In the past instances where we have actively seen the heads get ripped off, we see that Godzilla and Kong have been the ones responsible. With Godzilla decapitating the Muto and repeatedly cutting off Ghidorah's heads, to Kong who decapitated both a Warbat and Mechagodzilla in the same film. The common denominator is that these two are alphas. Now, it will make sense for the current alpha to continuously cut off heads to make a statement, but Kong, apart from being an alpha himself, also belongs to a species whose social culture was similar to that of humans. Instinctually, or just figuring that this particular body part serves as some sort of trophy representing victory over a rival. But there could be more to this. We'd like to think that this behavior is not exclusive to just Godzilla and Kong, but also to other titans with the ability to also become the Alpha. Who are we talking about? Back to Godzilla, King of the Monsters, we witnessed Rodan attempt to bite the head of Mothra three times before succumbing to her stinger, saving her life. Rodan at this point was not an Alpha, but could have become the Alpha had he defeated Ghidorah. Or if for whatever reason his challenge to Godzilla actually worked. Another Titan that could give the current Alphas a good run for their money would be Titanus Tiamat, who is currently accused of killing off a Kong specimen who made its home in Godzilla's old lair. All that remains is a skull with no signs of the remaining skeleton, suggesting that maybe it was also decapitated, perhaps after he was killed. Whatever the case, it has become clear that these kaiju have a strange habit of parting the heads from their enemies' bodies, making it evident that these monsters are not your typical oversized animals. They are more than this. The world of Titans is a brutal world where only the strongest survive, and when rebelling or daring to disrespect an alpha kaiju will carry dire consequences. In the upcoming film Godzilla x Kong, there will be many alphas involved, and we'll almost assuredly see some head injuries happen in this new film. Both Kong and Godzilla are capable of delivering decapitating blows, more so now that Kong is armed with an axe. Do you think we'll see another titan-sized head get lopped off someone's shoulders again? Or do you think decapitations have come to an end? Let us know in the comments! Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode!